In this video, we're going to learn how to do the basics of using GMock and Google Test in Visual Studio. So we're going to first create a mock class. We're going to instrument that mock class. And then we'll write our first test case using that mock class. And we'll cover a little bit about how to use on call and expect call, just the basics. The follow-up video of this will go in more depth on how to use the on-call macros. So before we look at any code, let's look at some concepts first. First, what is a mock? If you remember right, when we write unit level tests, we're trying to focus all of our testing on a one on one area. In this case, we're going to focus all of our effort on Bitcoin wallet. But as we look into Bitcoin wallet, we find out that Bitcoin wallet has dependencies on these three other classes, Bitcoin bank, transaction and commerce. But we only want to look at the functionality in Bitcoin Wallet. One of the reasons we may want to do that is any calls to Bitcoin Bank may actually go out to a bank and transfer money. We don't want our unit level test transferring people's money around. That can be very dangerous and costly. So what we do is we write a mock class for each one of those classes that the Bitcoin Wallet depends on. And you may ask, well, what is mock? Well, Basically, a mock is a fake object that's created in the system to replace any dependencies that uh, a class may have on it. It's going to pass back data depending on the parameters that are passed in. It'll pass back good data or bad data. A really good mock framework like Google Mock allows you to um, control the type of data that's going to be passed around in the unit level tests that um, are using that mock. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how this is done. So let's go ahead and open up here Visual Studio. Um, I'm using 2012. And then um, let's go ahead and create our first mock class. And the mock class we're going to create is the Bitcoin transaction mock class. So let's go ahead and right mouse click and say add um, new item. Make sure you do that in the Bitcoin unit level test project. We're going to create a header file. Let's go ahead and name that header file Bitcoin transaction underscore mock. It's important here that you're using a standard naming convention so that I can find all my mock classes quickly. I use underscore mock. Okay, let's go ahead and create that file. And then I'm going to populate this file with the definition of the mock. So the first thing we put in there is, of course, the gmock header file. That will give me all the macros I need in order to do the uh, to create the mock class. And then right here, I include the class that I'm going to mock, which is Bitcoin transaction, because really all I'm doing is creating a specialization of that class. I make sure that that inheritance is public. Okay, in this section here. I make sure that for every method that I have in Bitcoin transaction, I create a public method using the uh, mock macros that are supplied in gmock.header file. Okay. Um, these macros have a naming convention. It's mock underscore method, and then the cardinality of the parameters of the method that I'm mocking. So in this case, there's three parameters to the method set. So I use mock underscore method three. And then the next parameter is the name of the method. And then the next parameter is basically the parameters of the method itself. Set passes back a void and it takes three arguments. Const string reference and a const string reference and a long. Now you do have some cases where you actually have a method that passes back nothing. In that case I do a mock method zero like an amount. There are no parameters being passed in but it passes back an int. So I say int and then void. So that's all there is to do in mocking up a class. So it's pretty straightforward. It is important though that you do match your parameters to the real um, method and that you put all your methods under the public um, access. Okay, 
that's it for that creating the mock. Let's go ahead and create a unit level test that will use these mocks. So let's go ahead and hit new, a CPP file. And we decided that we're going to be testing Bitcoin wallet. So let's use our naming convention that we talked about in the earlier videos, Bitcoin wallet ULT. And I'll go ahead and create that. So I have Bitcoin wallet ULT. And uh, so you don't have to watch me type. I'm going to cut and paste how this all works and I'll walk you through it. So first thing we have to include is gtest and gmock. And then because we are testing Bitcoin wallet, we want to include Bitcoin wallet. And then we've already looked at the code and we found out that Bitcoin wallet depends on Bitcoin bank, commerce and currency. And they depend on them through calling this thing called external service, um, which has instances of those um, uh, classes running. So we want to make sure that we are creating mocks that are used for those. So we need to include those mocks right here. Also, there's two directives here, which is telling um, the macros how to use um, certain um, definitions that are in GMock. So we use, say, using, colon, colon, testing, and the testing namespace, return, and underscore. And I'll show you what those do in a little bit. So here in the external service, I'm creating mocks. I'm assigning to the bank, the currency, and the commerce. And each one, I create each one. So now when wallet goes out and calls external service, it's going to use those mocks instead of really going out and using a real Bitcoin bank, which could be very costly, as I mentioned before. So just like in our normal unit level test, I have the test macro. I have the test name, our test case name, which is Bitcoin wallet test. And then I have the test name, which is update local balance test with no account. So I'm going to set up the scenario so that I'm testing when there's no account set, how Bitcoin wallet is going to behave when I call update local balance. OK, so in order to do that, I create another Bitcoin bank mock and I go ahead and set it to the external service. This is so I have a handle on it. And then I call this really interesting macro called on call. On call takes two parameters. It takes the object that I'm going to um, then change the behavior of. And then it takes the name of the method that I'm going to say what the behavior is. So in this case, I want to change the behavior of the method change balance and it has two parameters. And I use underscore to say, I don't care what the parameters are, the values of the parameters. I just want to change the behavior of any time change balance is called. What's really cool about this concept, and these are called matchers, is I can set it up so that if a specific account is called, I would return a specific value. Or if a specific amount is defined, I can return a specific value every time change balance comes in. In this case here, change balance, I say anytime change balance is called, by default, I'm going to return a negative one, which says I can't find the account. Now, if I look through the code, I'm going to find that update local balance is going to call change balance, and it's going to pass this information on up. So I go ahead and I call my normal assert macro that I'm used to. I update the local balance and I go ahead and get account balance does not exist. So let's see if this works. I go ahead and compile this all up. And I should be able to also run this test um, by hitting Control F5 or if you've installed the, um, the plugin. I can go ahead and, and run all the tests here. Let's go ahead and do that and see how our results came out. So it worked. Look right here. Bitcoin wallet test update balance with no account. It worked fine. That's pretty cool. I want to show you one more negative scenario test.
And you're going to run into this because we all have fat fingers sometimes and we forget to type in all the parameters appropriately. So let's remove one of those consts um, on one of those parameters and go ahead and hit save. And now let's go ahead and build. I want you to see what this error looks like so when you run into it, you don't spend all your time trying to figure out what just happened. You notice right here it says, I cannot convert parameter one from a const car star to a standard. You can see that you've got a parameter mismatch somehow. So the best place to go is go back and look up in your mock, and look in your Bitcoin transaction, make sure that they do match because the compiler does not like it when they don't. So making that simple change, I can go ahead and build again and I know I'm clean. So if you have any additional questions on on-call or expect call, wait for my next video. We go into more depth on how to use on-call and specifically how to use those matchers so that I can make my testing very targeted and very intelligent.